sensors. So when I ask someone to turn off the car, that's typically if I'm going to get them out of the car, I would ask them to turn off the car and hand me the keys. When I smell the odor of marijuana, we're going to begin a drug investigation. So we're going to search the interior of the vehicle typically. I ask him if he has a, 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 a driver's license on him. He said he doesn't. And I think that's the point in the video. I don't want to, I don't want to mix up the order, but that's why I ask him to hand me the car keys because he doesn't have an ID. I smell narcotics coming from the car. I know another officer observed some indicators. I'm not sure exactly what it is yet, but I just want to secure the keys so the vehicle can't get mobile uh, at that point. Uh, I ask him if he has a warrant because just, just in my experience, he looks upset, he looks, he looks nervous and he doesn't have an ID. Most people have their ID when they operate a car. Not everybody brings it every time. Most people do. Uh, so that's why I ask him if he has a warrant. So uh, when you have narcotics and a large amount of money, one of the things you might be concerned with is there may be weapons involved or there may be drugs involved. You, you smell drugs, you have a large amount of cash, a lot of times drug, uh, weapons are involved there. Narcotics training, uh, we, we do when we get hired here, uh, we go up to our narcotics unit and it's one of the things that they call it, they call it the, the holy trinity. If you have uh, money and guns, you'll find drugs a lot of times, or it's, it's two out of the three usually have the third one. It's one of the things that they train us in our narcotics unit here. Uh, also, he takes that money out when he gives me his ID and he passes it to the passenger. So when we're dealing with narcotics and people start passing items in the car, that, that's going to raise your behavior that they're passing, passing items. Uh, I've had narcotics rolled up in money or just the fact that he took money out and handed it to her was, was odd to me. This is Michael Amiot, a pretty awful police officer if I do say so myself. He was recently found guilty for one count of assault and one count of interfering with civil rights. But if you watch corporate media, you probably haven't heard about this story because they're too busy feeding you the fact that Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson just broke up. In 2017, Amiot conducted a traffic stop on Richard Hubbard for driving with a suspended license. The stop escalated for no reason, resulting in Amiot repeatedly punching Hubbard and leaving him seriously injured. This case took a whopping five years to go to trial, but the trial lasted only five days before they found him guilty. I'm going to show you guys a clip of the trial where the jury convicts Michael Amiot for assault and violating civil rights, and you guys let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section. The heading in the Euclid Municipal Court, Cuyahoga County, Ohio, State of Ohio, plaintiff versus Michael Amiot, defendant, Case number 19CRB00890, verdict. We, the jury, being duly impaneled and sworn, do hereby find the defendant, Michael Amiot, not guilty of assault, a misdemeanor of the first degree in violation of section 2903.13a of the Ohio Revised Code as charged in count one. We do so render our verdict this 29th day of July signed by all eight jurors. Verdict. We, the jury being duly impaneled and sworn, do hereby find the defendant Michael Amiot guilty of assault, a misdemeanor of the first degree, in violation of section 2903.13a of the Ohio Revised Code as charged in count two. We do so render our verdict this 29th day of July 2022, signed by all eight jurors. Verdict. We, the jury, being duly impaneled and sworn, do hereby find the defendant Michael Amiot guilty of interfering with civil rights, a misdemeanor of the first degree, in violation of section 2921.45a of the Ohio Revised Code, as charged in count three. We do so render our verdict this 29th day of July, 2022, signed by all eight jurors. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, are these your verdicts? Yes, yes sir. Yes. On behalf of the state, do you wish the jury polled? No, Your Honor. On behalf of the defendant, do you wish the jury polled? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number one, is this your verdict? Yes, it is, Your Honor. Are these your verdicts, I should say? Yes. Juror number two, are these your verdicts? Yes. Juror number three, are these your verdicts? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number four, are these your verdicts? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number five, are these your verdicts? Yes. 
Juror number six, are these your verdicts? Juror number seven, are these your verdicts? Yes. Juror number eight, are these your verdicts? Yes. Anything further of the juror? Real quick, I want to give some input. So I know it's customary for the judge to ask each juror if that was their verdict. But in a room full of uniformed police officers, to me, this kind of seems like an intimidation tactic because you never know if these jurors are going to face retaliation from these officers, especially in a city like Euclid where the cops are known for using excessive force. I know personally as a juror, I would feel uncomfortable with that many uniformed officers in the room with me as I'm giving my verdict. But let me know what you think. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I want to thank you all for performing your civic duty. One of the things that uh, I will say is that you've done your job. You came, you heard the evidence, you applied the law, you made a decision. The prosecutor had a job, the defense attorney had a job. Your job was not to prove anything or disprove anything. Your job was to determine what was presented to you, determine the facts, apply the law, render a verdict. You did that. You should leave feeling that you've done your job. No second guessing, you've done your job. If someone else didn't, that's not your job. You've done it. Uh, with that, uh, you will be discharged. If you'd like to hang around a few minutes and talk with me, I will do that. If you do not, that's entirely understandable. Uh, sometimes the lawyers would like to talk with you to determine how they came across to you. But again, that is your decision as to whether you wish to speak with them. With that, anything prior to discharging the jury? No, Your Honor. On behalf of the defendant, anything? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, thank you very much. You're discharged at this time. If you want to wait in the jury room, I'll meet with you later. With that, you're discharged. All rise. You may be seated. Based upon the uh, verdicts uh, rendered by the judge, uh, the jury, the court at this time will enter on, with respect to count one, a finding of not guilty, count two and count three, the court will enter a finding of guilty. Uh, the court will set this matter out for sentencing given the fact that the, under Ohio law, the victim has the right to make a statement or present anything he, he may wish to present to the court. Uh, the court will request the Cuyahoga County Common Pleas Court Probation Department to submit to the court any documents or any information that it wishes to submit uh, with respect to pre-sentence investigation or what have you. Uh, the court feels that that's appropriate given the fact that uh, the Euclid Municipal Court uh, is under the judge. The judge recused himself. It is better that uh, we maintain uh, the appearance of appropriateness in requesting that that be done by the Cuyahoga County Common Pleas Court. Anything else? Uh, the court will consult with the attorneys and the court administrator and set this matter over for sentencing at a date that's agreeable for everyone. Anything else on behalf of the state? Anything on behalf of the defendant? Uh, if there was a bond or no bond, it'll continue as stated. Uh, I want to uh, Thank everybody for their conduct. I know it got a little contentious at time, but uh, that's to be expected sometimes. With that, we adjourn.
Yes. All right, and that's going to do it for today's video, but I want to add some more real quick before I go. So back in 2017, Emiya was initially suspended for 15 days without pay after this incident happened. But the mayor tacked on another 30 days, and eventually he was terminated due to the complaints of first conduct. Like I said, the case took five years to go to trial, which is absolutely ridiculous. And some more backstory on Emiya. He worked with the Mentor Police for about a year before signing on with the Euclid Police in 2014. The Mentor Police chief went on record stating that Emiya was struggling with meeting their standards so that's why he transferred Ohio Revised Law 2935.09.10 states that if you have knowledge of a crime in Ohio, you can petition the judge giving them your evidence to do an investigation and order an arrest, and that's how this situation came to trial. Not only that, but get this. After the trial, the Fraternal Order of Police issued a statement that said, we are disappointed in the jury's guilty verdict. We remain confident that Officer Amy Ott's actions were reasonable given the circumstances, and we continue to stand by him. It's comments like this that would make me fear retaliation if I was juror in this specific trial. As of right now, Michael Amiot will be sentenced at a later date, and Richard Hubbard did file a civil rights lawsuit against the city of Euclid, and they reached a settlement of $450,000 last year. And with that, I'm going to say thank you for tuning in to today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a thumbs up, and remember to always educate yourselves on your rights and film every single police interaction. Later, guys. I know my rights like I passed the bar. I'ma make sure you know yours and all. Uh, Home of the brave, free us all. Can't do it all and we stand and talk. Only real criminals behind bars. Only real criminals behind bars. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Officer. Why won't pull me over?